Let's go! If you're a diehard LSU football fan, strap in, and at the same time, I'm going to need your help because I'm going to discuss LSU recruiting out of state wide receivers because the Tigers are hot in pursuit of Evan Stewart, a five star receiver out of Frisco, Texas. And they're still trying to get Chaz Preston, a top 100 receiver out of Louisiana, to commit for the class of 2022. But LSU right now already has three wide receivers committed. And last season, LSU brought in five wide receivers. And that doesn't include LSU being young at wide receiver overall right now with having Coy Moore and Kayshawn Butte for at least two more seasons. So LSU is really backlogged at this position, but they feel they're not done recruiting it. But what does this all mean? Like, what should LSU do with the wide receiver position? Because you can have too many wide receivers. Or can you have too many wide receivers? So we're going to look at this from so many different angles. I'm telling you, you're absolutely going to love this deep dive. Because Evan Stewart, five-star wide receiver baller. And what I'm going to do is entertain quite a few of you. And in the background of while I'm talking, I'm just going to play Evan Stewart highlights during Frisco, Texas. And as you can see, this guy is pretty unreal. That ball was thrown behind him, and this is obviously a big game in the Dallas Cowboys practice facility, and he takes it to the house. So as you see here, Evan Stewart is really good at tackle football. And of course, LSU is going to be in the mix with all these other big schools. Now, I want to share with you how I feel about out-of-state wide receivers. There's a lot of good ones, and with 7-on-7 seven seven becoming an even bigger phenomena, the wide receiver position is still going to be pretty fruitful for LSU. The funny thing about it, though, is, and we'll show you the data in just a second, LSU hasn't needed out-of-state wide receivers, and that's particularly impressive considering all the out-of-state wide receivers LSU has lost out on over the past decade. So I want to spend some time talking about a wide receiver by the name of JoJo Earl, who was committed to LSU all the way up until the very last second, and he flipped to Alabama. Now, as many of you know, if you're a diehard fan of this channel, you know that JoJo Earl was my number one player in the class of 2021, period. But on the very last day, he flipped to Alabama, which sucks. But here's the funny thing. It wasn't just JoJo Earl, whereas the year before, LSU had two very good wide receiver prospects, Rakeem Jarrett, a five-star to Maryland, and Jermaine Burton, a high-level four-star out of Calabasas, California. They both flipped on signing day to new schools, Maryland and Georgia. And here's the funny thing. Both of them had pretty phenomenal true freshman campaigns. So, yes, those two were great, and we missed out on them. Let's just watch. Uh, I really have been showing you all this different stuff. I should have just kept the Evan Stewart highlights going. I want you to look at this at this play in particular. Whew. I mean, just gliding by players. You know you're a good prospect when you just glide by people. But right now what we're going to do is I'm going to show you the data. And what is going to blow your mind is LSU is really not needed out-of-state wide receivers at all. Yeah, I, I'm going to want you guys to comment after this video. And before you comment, I want you to look at this data I'm about to show you. Does LSU need out-of-state wide receivers? So, this data, of course, it looks like an Excel sheet. I apologize. I know you guys want to escape work when you watch this channel. But it is going to be some nostalgia because you see Jarvis Landry, you see Odell, you see Traven Durall. So, this list is the 30-plus wide receivers LSU has picked up since 2011. And as you can see, it's quite a wide variety of players. And to the left here, option A was a star player, option B was a good player, option C was a med player, and an option D player is just a flat-out bust, per se, someone that didn't really help out LSU at all on the field. So... Obviously, these players right now are sorted based on chronological year, but I want to show you this. When we sort this column, as you can see, LSU has had a wide variety of players nationally ranked in the top 100. So, when you recruit a top 100 receiver, more than likely they're going to be successful over the past decade. So, Jamar Chase, Trey Quinn, and Tyron Johnson, they transferred because Les Miles was horrible, and they both 
you know, had pretty decent NFL careers. Tyron Johnson's still in the NFL. But as you scroll up and down this list, you see that the recruiting ranking of wide receivers doesn't necessarily mean that you're not going to be good because down here you have Russell Gage, Justin Jefferson, DJ Chark. I think Jure Jenkins is going to be fantastic and Reese McMath, of course. So, you know, you see some really good players. Trayvon Durall wasn't an elite recruit. So your recruiting ranking doesn't necessarily mean you're not going to be great, which a lot of you know how I feel about Jack Besh. I think he's going to be fantastic. So I'll show you this here. Let's group all the wide receivers based on state okay so now you're looking at all the wide receivers and down here zoom out here these are the wide receivers from out of the state of louisiana that have committed and played at lsu and as you can see here there have been seven wide receivers that have been at lsu and not a single one of them really turned out to be anything special D. Anderson caught 20 passes his junior season, but then in 2019, showed up out of shape and transferred. So, um, he was the only out-of-state wide receiver that had at least 20 catches since 2010 outside of Kadron Boone, who then his junior season didn't follow up what he did his sophomore season. The last great out-of-state wide receiver was Terrence Tolliver in 2010, and he was, of course, a five-star out of Texas, and... Terrence Tolliver was very underrated. And I'm not just saying that because he retweeted me the other day. He is one of the most underappreciated LSU players of all time. So, yes, an out-of-state wide receiver can very well succeed at LSU. It's just they haven't needed them to because LSU has had so much success with in-state wide receivers. And as you look here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, Seven top 100 wide receivers since 2011 have gone to LSU. All seven of them have gone to the NFL. Now, of course, Kayshawn, he's not at the NFL le yet, but he'll be ready for the NFL next season if he was ready to come out. So, Or if he could go to the NFL. So, look, top 100 wide receivers, that should always be your top priority. So, yes, what can you take away from what we just showed you? So before we talk more about Evan Stewart and Chaz Preston, I do want to share Texas top 100 wide receivers. How do they actually compare to Louisiana top 100 wide receivers? And of course, you're looking at all the names from 2008 to 2018. And as you can tell, Texas wide receivers simply don't hit at the same clip at Louis da, 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 as Louisiana wide receivers. Now, of course, as you can see, there are more Texas wide receivers in the top 100 simply because Texas is Texas. They produce so much elite talent, and they're such a such bigger state than Louisiana. But obviously, you could tell that the numbers quite aren't the same. Of the 26 wide receivers from Texas top 100 2008 to 2018, only 13 of them are what I would consider good. And by good, that means they had at least 35 receptions in one season of college ball. Whereas with the top 100 Louisiana wide receivers, I was just evaluating whether or not they made it to the league. So the threshold was way higher when I evaluated the Louisiana wide receivers. So if roughly two out of every three Louisiana top 100 wide receivers make it to the league, Texas top 100 wide receivers, one out of every two, only 50%, actually turn out to be good in college. Now, in recent years, the Texas wide receivers have been a lot better, whether that's Jalen Waddle or Garrett Wilson or whoever else. But still, uh, Louisiana top 100 wide receivers, whether they go to LSU or if they're like Devonta Smith, they go to Alabama or Trey Quinn at SMU, they are still just better players. Now, obviously, that doesn't mean that Evan Stewart or Shaz Preston will be better than one another, but it's just the data. LSU had two Louisiana wide receivers that were in the top 100 that committed last season, Chris Hilton and Brian Thomas Jr. Barring a disaster, it's going to be hard to not see one of those guys being a superstar at LSU. And based on the overall data, if roughly two out of every three Louisiana top 100 wide receivers go to the NFL, if Shaz Preston does commit to LSU, which it's looking like it's going to happen, more than likely out of Chris Hilton, Brian Thomas Jr., and Chaz Preston, two of them will make it to the NFL, which is obviously a really good thing. And 
If this trend continues, the last seven. So in recent history, it's even made this point even stronger. Top 100 Louisiana wide receivers should be your top priority. So, yes, you apply that now to current day. Evan Stewart is a higher rated prospect than Shaz Preston. But, of course, Shaz Preston is a flat-out baller out of St. James High School. He is a top 100 wide receiver. You absolutely... Positively, you don't need to land him. There's no such thing as a must get. There's no such thing as a need, but he should be a high priority pick. And I understand LSU already has three wide receivers committed. But since there is a high priority and a high correlation with top 100 Louisiana wide receivers, including that guy that won the Heisman Trophy for Alabama, you should absolutely want to go land this guy. So, yes, Jazz Preston should, obviously, he and Evan Stewart, they, you know, play in seven-on-sevens, and they know each other pretty well, Jazz Preston should be the number one priority of wide receiver for the rest of the class. So we'll, we'll see what happens there. So here's the thing. College football, with the way offenses are now, there's a lot of wide receivers that break out and become fantastic. I mean, all the rules favor the offenses, and as quarterbacks get better and, and rules begin to favor, I mean, you can't hit guys over the middle. You can't hit quarterbacks. We're going to see more and more wide receivers break out with the rise of 7-on-7 football. And no state has produced wide receivers quite like Louisiana. So with the young wide receivers LSU currently has on its roster and already five wide receivers committed in this class, it goes to show you that, yes, Jermaine Burton, and yes, Rakeem Jarrett, and yes, JoJo Earl probably will be All-American or NFL-level players, But LSU was still fine. So, this gets into the question of whether you still need to recruit wide receivers. Now, this comes down to, you know, a philosophical question. How important are recruiting pipelines? Obviously, you still need to recruit nationwide to keep recruiting pipelines open, even if it's not for wide receivers. So, I totally understand that. There's a lot of behind-the-scenes stuff, unless you've worked at colleges, and I haven't. Uh, that that goes on. So there's obviously more to it than just recruit, quit recruiting wide receivers from out of state altogether, you know. But it, it it is interesting because take a look at this. The last three wide receivers that were elite top 100 prospects that LSU had committed all flipped on the final day of their recruitment. So what happened with JoJo Earl was LSU was still able to nab. Malik Neighbors on the final day, so it wasn't really that big of a deal. And even if they didn't get Malik Neighbors, it still would have been fine. They would have had four really good wide receivers that would have signed with LSU. But the problem was the 2020 class. So, um, Rakeem Jarrett and Jermaine Burton were committed to LSU for quite some time. But then, they flip on the final day. You have to keep in mind slot management. And at that time, slots do not mean as much as they do now because the transfer portal is going to be even more important now more than ever. So when you lose a player, it's not as bad, but you are banking on that player to actually use up that slot. So Jermaine Burton and Rakeem Jarrett were taking up slots that potential other players you could have recruited could have taken, which then brings back in a guy by the name of Major Burns, okay? So yeah, we've done a lot of content on Major Burns, obviously, because he was LSU's final signee for the class of 2021 this summer as a transfer from Georgia. Now, we're not talking about him right now. We're talking about him, though, in the lens of 2020, where he was a high school recruit alongside Rakeem Jarrett and Jermaine Burton. Now, he wasn't rated as highly as those guys, but... I'm going to throw a full disclosure out here once. We have yet to hear, to, to her, we have yet to hear Major Burns or Ed Orgeron officially speak on what happened to Major Burns at the end of the recruiting cycle in 2020. But Major Burns, for those that don't know, LSU had Major Burns committed for quite some time, and Major Burns all of a sudden decommitted in December, right before the early signing period. And the reports out there say that Major Burns was process, which means LSU told him that they didn't want him anymore, and Major Burns decided to go to Georgia. Now, if that is what happens, sans this wide receiver talk, 
LSU probably shouldn't have ever done that, especially this late in the process. It's just not, you know, a really good thing to do in good faith. But either way, Major Burns was a more valuable player than Jermaine Burden or Rakeem Jarrett because LSU is still fine at wide receiver without those two, whereas LSU's defensive back depth wasn't nearly the same. So, this brings up the idea that if you don't need out-of-state wide receivers and you bring in so many Louisiana wide receivers and you're going to be just fine at wide receiver, if you do get an out-of-state wide receiver, they do take up slots where other positions of value could be used. So, that's where this thing comes into the equation as far as recruiting out-of-state wide receivers. Remember, There are only a finite amount of slots every class, only 25. And then you want to leave open slots for the transfer portal. So, high school wide receivers, LSU really needs to rethink whether, you know, how many wide receivers they want to take in every class because of the limited slots and and so many other factors that will be affecting LSU, such as limited scholarship counts over the next couple of seasons. So, understand that... That slot can go to someone, you know, more at a more valuable position because the truth is LSU is never not going to have enough wide receivers. So it is a very fascinating idea uh, and one that LSU should, you know, think about. So should LSU quit their recruitment of Evan Stewart? And the answer to that is no. He's a really good wide receiver prospect and they've already started recruiting him. And obviously he has a really good relationship with LSU. And the bottom line is he is an absolutely phenomenal prospect. I was super excited when LSU was able to get JoJo Earl. That shows you how good of a recruiter Mickey Joseph is. It's just that, yes, you can have too many wide receivers. And wide receivers could take up another slot um, uh, that could go to a player like, of course, uh, Major Burns, who obviously really wants to be here. Now, I'm going to end this video. There's not going to be a lot of fancy edits, but I'm just going to share with you a few more things from my research, and then you can draw your own conclusion and obviously get involved in the comment section. So, the first thing is Pro Football Focus has a metric called WAA. And according to WAA, which, you know, takes into a lot of, you know, it takes a lot of different things into the equation of value, wide receivers are the second most valuable position in all of college football, only behind quarterbacks. And that doesn't include the value that wide receivers give you on special teams as return man as kickoff and punt returners and gunners on special teams and kickoff teams and all these different things. So wide receivers do give you the most value. And if Evan Stewart is a superstar wide receiver and he signs with LSU and he really wants to come, you know, you absolutely would love to have him. There's no way you say no to a superstar talent quite like this guy. Also, something else you want to keep in mind is based on what you saw earlier in the video, LSU has had a lot, and I mean an alarmingly high amount of three-star wide receivers turn out to be superstars. In fact, they've had as many three-star NFL Pro Bowler wide receivers DJ Chark and Justin Jefferson as four and five star Pro Bowl wide receivers, Jarvis Landry and Odell Beckham since 2011. So what does that tell you? Well, it tells you that even if you whiff on every five star wide receiver and you end up only getting a three star wide receiver, that's not the worst consolation prize because What we know is Louisiana prospects, most of them dream of coming to LSU. They dream of getting that offer. They're a three-star. They'll do whatever it takes for the team, and they put in a lot of hard work. There is something to that, and that has been proven time and time again that three-star Louisiana prospects do hit at a high rate. I actually did the, the numbers on this. Let me pull this up really quickly. You know, obviously, I'm rushing to get this video out. Uh, let's see here. Obviously, this is really you know good video editing. So from 2008 to 2019, LSU has brought in roughly 64 three-star prospects. This is just not wide receiver. This is, of course, all positions. 
31 of those three-star prospects turned out to be base good, just good. I'm not talking about great, like obviously DJ Shark, Justin Jefferson, Clyde Edwards-Alaire. So roughly 50% of Louisiana three-stars turn out to actually be good prospects. And we're going to be doing another study on that. So that's something else to keep in mind. Whereas, you know, if you whiff on all these five-star wide receivers, a three-star wide receiver can always, and just a three-star Louisiana player in general, can be a good player. Now, I'm not saying just recruit Louisiana guys and just recruit, you know, you can't win national championships without players from outside the state. Does LSU need out-of-state wide receivers? Let me know. It is power hour LSU. Boom! So right now, floating in your face, that data we used earlier, we use that same data to predict which one of these true freshman five wide receivers will have the best career. So if you want to watch that video, it's floating right here. And I think we're doing tuna steaks tonight. Let's go!